Just a little bit of showing people this wonderful work you've been doing. Yes. I'll let you tell us about it. Oh, okay. So I started building harps uh, because I wanted one, so I built one from a free plan off the internet. And then I designed a new harp to be cheaper and easier to make and sturdy. And now I just want to let people have a go and, and experience it and hopefully share the joy of harps. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, so, so wonderful. So you, you make them, you? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, tell us about the, what would it be, the timbre or sound? How is that determined by the size or...? So it's determined by the thickness and the length of the strings mostly oh, yeah. and the size of the sound box. Yeah. So. As long as the sound box is large enough to give you that resonance, you get that beautiful sound from the strings. That beautiful, <laughs> beautiful sound. Yes. And uh, to learn to play, it, it would be quite a long, long process. I think harps are actually very forgiving. I think uh, they sound pretty good from the get-go. I can't even really play the harp very well, so... <laughs> Um, but it's more finding someone to teach you, so a lot of stuff you get taught yeah. from the internet or or other people who know how to play the harp. It's a little bit more difficult to find and teachers. Do you think you'd like to learn? <laughs> They're clever, aren't they? How they can make them. Beautiful work. Thank you so much for telling us all about it. All good, thank you. Alex, this is fascinating work you're doing. Tell me about it. So I'm putting in the eyelets in the soundboard uh, and this is you, so when you put the strings in right. they don't rub and they don't cut themselves and they sort of right. snap. So that's interesting, uh, I've never noticed before, so there's a sound box yep. involved in that uh, and that yep. would determine the quality and the... Uh, the quality and the loudness. Right. Yep. Um, so there's holes in the back. Oh, right. Shut the air out and give you access to the strings. Yeah. Um, and when you have it fully strung up, this starts to belly up, like some of the other ones. Right. Um, but since it hasn't been strung up yet, it's all very flat. And how long have you been interested in this um, uh, A few months, I think. Oh, a few months. Yeah, uh, this is still very recent. Do you um, play the half too? Or? No, I mostly just help Asta make right. the halves. It produces wonderful backing. Yeah, it like does. A, They're really nice. Sort of, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> you guys are to be congratulated on keeping the arts going in this sort of field. Yeah. Do you think it's good we have exhibitions like this? Or? Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's been really, it's been really interesting. It's really Very fun. Popular. Well, thank you, and keep up that good work. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ian, this is a fascinating display. Could you tell me about it? Of course, of course. A number of years ago, I got interested in the Appalachian or Mountain Dulcimer, which is this device here. Um, and during my research, I found that it was based on a, a very old German instrument, right. which is called the Schieholz. Right. Um, the Schieholz was uh, taken to... Uh, Pennsylvania in uh, about the 18th century by German immigrants right. uh, and from that instrument uh, the local people in the Appalachian Mountains uh, built their own versions of it which is the what we call the mountain dulcimer or the Appalachian dulcimer and it comes in uh, typically two shapes right. this one from Kentucky and uh, so there are various adaptations of they Yes, all yes. Do? Okay, the, the other one is this one, which is uh, we call a teardrop version. Right. That actually comes from West Virginia. Right. right. So West Virginia, Kentucky, and then later on in about the 1980s, a guy named Bob McNally built this instrument here, which is a combination of the, the dulcimer type fingerboard Right. Uh, but adapted on a, a necked instrument that's a sort of similar to, say, a banjo right. or mandolin or something of that nature. So, again, it has the ease of playing that the, the mountain dulcimer has, right. the simplicity of the diatonic scale, uh, but adapted into an instrument that uh, 
will be familiar with uh, like banjo players or guitar players yeah. or mandolin players, people like that. And do you play them? I do, I do. Yeah. I find that uh, this instrument is very very soothing, it's, it's almost a form of meditation yeah. to play, play that one, as is this. But these are more convenient in that they can be hung on the wall right. uh, and just taken down and played when you feel yeah. like it, which is probably about every day. Yeah. Yeah. So, play. Oh. <laughs> it's basically how it sounds. Yeah, 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 very much. Yeah. So. Oh, I've never seen them before. So well, a... it's the... yeah. I spoke to a gentleman recently. He said there's a guy up in Lismore or somewhere yeah. that make, makes them. Um... Well, thank you so much. Ian. Okay, you're most welcome. Jenna, you're busy here. Could you tell me what's going on? Um, so I'm a bookbinder. I'm just working on a book here at the moment. Um, uh, so bookbinding, you, you just stitch the pages together, bind it together, I guess. That's what the word means. <laughs> um, yeah. I can't relax. <laughs> so you can bring back two old books and documents to life, can you? I'm getting into restoration, but just at the moment I'm just doing sort of creation work and right. making new books, yeah, essentially. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it takes quite a while, does it, to bind a book? Um, it depends on the style, the, the binding style of the book. Um, these ones here, these bigger ones, they take anywhere up to 15 hours to create yeah, from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, so these little groupings of paper, the little pages, they're called signatures. Oh, and you bind them onto these cords. Right. Um, so you just sort of go in and out and around the cords yeah. from each signature. And this book will end up looking sort of like this book. The very old-fashioned books with Isn't the ridges visible on yes. the spine. Yes. Yeah, they're very, very gorgeous books. Yeah. Yes. Are you selling the books? Yeah, yeah. So I have all the books over on that side of the table. They're all for sale. We have a few different styles. That book we were looking at, the 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 black one. Uh, yeah. So that took about 15 hours of solid work. Not including the drying times for all the coats of glue. Yeah, well, yeah, the the frame bound. This one I was just just telling you about. It dates back to medieval times. Yeah, so it's very very old, very ancient. And, it's and do you enjoy coming along to these exhibits and so on? Yeah, well this is my first time doing a um, demonstrator sort of right. event, but I'm loving it and I'm definitely willing to come back next year. Yeah. So, Sandy, you've uh, got the mic on, you might tell me a little bit about what's going on here. Well, we're here in Walshaw Hall, which is one of the four venues for the Bathurst. Heritage Trade Trail 2019. Uh, this wonderful, wonderful arts and crafts building is full of the most talented people. Just look over there, mandolin maker, harp maker, printers and violin maker. And, uh, it's so wonderful to see the arts coming together and people seeing actually what's involved with the, uh, with the uh, skills. Well, not only that, they're enjoying themselves. The public's enjoying themselves yeah. and the artisans are enjoying themselves. Everyone's having a great time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, your committee came up with the idea to hold a... Well, that's right. Yes. Yeah, and so. Uh, so this is one of four venues. There's two other halls in town within walking yes, distance. Yeah, yeah. And then up at the Agricultural Research Station, we've got yes, yeah. all the farm yeah. trades and the hard yeah. trades, yeah. And horses and animals yeah. and all sorts of things going on up there yeah. too. And it's packed up there. There's oh, thousands yeah. of people yes, up there. So. Congratulations to you. All right. Family. All right. Great to be here.
here, which you must uh, have a look at and record. And I'll ask the ladies on the counter uh, just to tell me a little bit about, uh, are you getting a good attendance? We have had a fantastic attendance. Yesterday we virtually had to stand at the door right. to let the public through. Yes. It was just it's magnificent. Uh, Today's been a very steady flow through. Right. And it's fascinating for people to be learning about the, the arts, isn't it? Exactly, work, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And what is really interesting too is talking to the visitors that have come from every different avenue. Yes. Very, uh, very good. Um, and so you would agree with me that it's wonderful to hold these events. Oh, we must keep holding it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. This is our third year now, yes. and it's just getting better and yes. each year. Yes, just people know about it now. Yes. Great, great attraction. So do keep it up. Right? Do keep it up. That's right. So it's just people from Bathurst that have been attending. Not. We've had people from from everywhere. We've oh, yeah. had a couple come in from Penrith this morning just for this event. Uh, the the media and the marketing uh, avenues, the, the right. Facebook, they've found out about it. Um, a couple come in from South Australia, particularly wanted to come here. It's just, um, we're getting more and more people from out of town coming in. And, and with our artisans in this hall, they're all from out of town. Right. So um, that's, that's wonderful. The word will really spread. Word is spreading now, quite successfully. So I'm reading this uh, ceramics as one of the displays. Could you tell me about it? Uh, yeah, we are a student group from the University of Melbourne's Grimwade Centre for the Conservation of Cultural Materials. Uh, and we're here at Bathurst Heritage Trade Trails to advise and consult with people about how best to take care of their uh, home collections and uh, one of the big ones that people have in their homes are ceramics yeah. uh, which yeah and uh, they quite frequently break they fall they, they they get dropped and so we're advising on how best to repair yeah, yeah. Uh, not me personally but for a lot of us yeah yes. it is yes. And I'm sure you'd say displays are an integral part of learning trades and showing what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're, um, this is my first time here. Oh, yeah, is it? I just yeah. came with the University of Melbourne. I'm oh, um, right. a student yes. of the university in the Master of Cultural and Material Conservation. So we are here to explain what conservators do to take care of collection of ceramics, metals, paintings, photography. Yeah, I'm still doing it. So could you tell me a little bit about anything there or just illustrating the uh, different um, antiques? Yeah, so we have various ceramics that we brought up from uh, Melbourne, uh, from just our teaching collection. Um, basic pots and, and these plates. Um, this collect this whis whiskey jar here is from the Bathurst uh, Historical Society collection. Um, as are most of the metals here. Um, we have this here, which is actually a uh, yeah the tar the cardinal ruby lamp, which is used in photography dark rooms to cast different colors of light for the different filterings. Um, we have various silver uh, items here, which is another common uh, item in people's home collection. And uh, and I think we've all, at one point, uh, cleaned our grandmother's tarnished silver. Yes, yes, I've got quite a bit of pain. Um, so, are either of you doing ceramics work specifically, or your, your interest is more broad-based? Um, our interests tend to be a bit broader within a 3D objects kind of uh, frame versus paper or paintings. Uh, but we have both worked uh, with ceramics and metals, right. and uh, we definitely like them, yeah. Well, it's lovely having you up. Hope you enjoyed the time, and I certainly have looking and finding out so much. Thank you. So, uh, the Uni of Mel Melbourne is not just ceramics, but uh, all other uh, design features and display features. Here, the photo albums being collected and restored. Well, albums, we've certainly seen a few of those when we recorded uh, Bathurst Bicentenary. Uh, there was a big photo collection that we put together. So great work, other artifacts, textiles.
Oh, oh. Can you tell, tell me what you're doing, doing here? Okay, well, um, we have a painting from the Bathurst Historical Society collection, oh, yeah. which um, is a watercolour, a uh, watercolour of the region. But unfortunately, the backing of the artwork has um, failed, and uh, to avoid any dust and dirt and insects getting in there, and to prevent mold from growing, right. uh, we've uh, taken, separated the layers, the back, the painting, right down to the glass, and dry cleaned everything with one of these um, super soft brushes. Right. Um, we recommend if you want to dust your paintings at home, you use uh, women's makeup brushes. Right. And. Um, now we're just uh, cutting some uh, acid-free board to uh, uh, insert in the back. Right. We're going to tap in all the little nails back into the holes um, that have been originally there. And then we're going to finish it off by sealing off the artwork with some gummed brown paper tape to right. make sure nothing else comes and lives inside yes. the painting. Yeah, it's quite intricate <laughs> and uh, very detailed work. To um, yes, uh, it requires a lot of patience, but yeah. we love what we do. The so, uh, result is uh, it's great. And your first time to Bathurst? It's my first time in Bathurst. Uh, yeah. Canada, a nice city. Yeah, I love Bathurst. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's so and the, awesome, the top of the trees are lovely. Yes, yes. It's a region. Thank you so much. Design. So, um, our background in Australia is a 90 year history with the Swiss uh, in Melbourne and in Surrey Hills, a uh, 70 year history with the Czechs uh, who set up the embroidery factories here in Australia and um, taught me and uh, taught us at the French couture level of embroideries, fancy stitchings. So, so what we do, th this particular one is, is Baz Luhrmann, is, it's a test, these are all tester samples for, this right. one is Baz Luhrmann's Dragon from the, the uh, New York production of La Boheme. Right. Um, this one is about uh, Lithgow, the fires in Lithgow, it's for an art piece which is actually over there, right. um, uh, uh, about the burnt earth and the new life. Yes, right, right, right. And then we've got things like this, I don't know if you can see this, it's yes. on, on sheer. Uh, these are the women behind the wire. It's right. earth, air, water, and fire. Right. Yeah. And uh, and then we make the laces. Uh, we've got Australian wildflower laces, New Zealand wildflower laces, uh, all made in Lithgow. Most of it on the okay. kitchen table yeah. in Lithgow. Uh, the skulls are for Lithgow Halloween, wow. and where they invite the artists to decorate the skulls, and we've used the embroidery to create the effect. This one's uh, Princess Niwa Reka of. Uh, Maori uh, Polynesian folklore, and this is based on synthesia, people who see words in colour and numbers oh. in colour. Um, uh, something. So this display, this is also part of your display. Yes, behind. this this is all our work here. Yes, and walk us around it very quickly. Yes. I, okay. Well, let's let's start. Uh, 
Um, we do a lot of film work. These are these are how we make the fabrics uh, for film. This one is Judy and Punch, which was filmed last year. It's currently going to the Cannes Film Festival. Right. This one's Gods of Egypt, which is meant to actually be old and peasant and um, worn down. It's it's quite a, a new piece, but it will eventually get scrubbed down and and holes in it. This is. Um, from Gods of Egypt, also just just detail around the the necklines. Yeah. This lady ha uh, was a editor from the Vintage Magazine who commissioned a hat from the artist or hat lady Tanith Kavari, uh, and in turn we are commissioned to make the lace. Yeah. It's from the old movie, uh, the uh, the uh, Women's Room, way oh. back an old black and white movie. This is Wheels and Doll Baby doing the pearls with beading and crystal work. Um, up here we've we've got uh, a piece. Uh, it's a French Corneli embroidery from the designer uh, Lisa Ho wore that to a contro ball back in the 80s. Right. The pictures above. This is all Star Wars work, which was done in our Sydney workroom. Uh, this is the wedding dress when Anakin turns to Darth Vader. It's actually a chopped up uh, bedspread of multi slice. The art pieces are all done on organza. These pieces at the bottom here. All done on Ganza, um, using our medium of embroidery into art. The products that we have here are relating to uh, not having wastage in our core business, so we try and use up all our excess fabric and using embroidery to create lovely pieces. What else have we got here? <laughs> That's a variety. Of yes, uh, it's, some pieces are done as, as a, uh, a panel piece and we might do the roses here in long strips of yeah. meterage. And we might make all over fabric uh, and it all gets chopped up and uh, even, even things like um, juggling balls, uh, yeah. the individual pieces are made. We like to get the guys in particular yeah. to juggle for us. Um, what have we got here? Uh, so more art pieces. Th this, uh, yeah. Th so this is uh, she wears many hats. Most women wear lots of hats when they're in life. This is David Bowie. Um, Time waits for no yeah. man. And uh, more more Star Wars pieces. And this oh, this dress is actually. Um, the, the chef from uh, Secret Creek, uh, we wow. made it in Australian wildflowers. I don't know if you can see this, but that's the actual machine that we make the lace on. Uh, but this is high level bespoke couture yeah. work and, and we work with twiles, particularly when we're doing the bodices because we have to work with uh, fitting the, the, yeah. the, the yeah. person who's buying the thing. Yeah, the, yeah. Things like this, um, just embroidery pieces using up scraps of velvet. These are embroideries that are taken from the 16th century, uh, covers of Bibles and psalm books. And uh, we just mix and match the colours to make something interesting. And this is all ours. This, yeah. is, uh, this, this is actually... This actually has just gone to, this opened at the Nisei Theatre. This is Love Never Dies for Lloyd Webber. Yeah. And this opened at the Nisei Theatre in, in January. Um, we have done it before, once yeah. again on the kitchen table in Lithgow. Yeah. And, um, and we just re redid it yeah. again for them. We've been doing Phantom and uh, Love Never Dies yeah. for several years now. And yeah. um, these are all glow in the dark. Christmas decorations, yeah. um, where we make the laces in Lithgow, yeah. and, uh, and the laces also, I've got some here that are, can I just come in here, sorry. Oh, we're going to go this way. Yeah. This is Australian wildflower laces, and this this is this is where we make full meterage, I don't know if you can see that. Yes, Oops, <laughs> here we go. Yes. Uh, so this is, oh, once again it's bespoke, where you can commission it to, yes. to be done. Um, these are cards we make. Um, they can be peeled off and, and recycled into something else. They've been framed up yeah. from the movie Victoria and Abdul. Yeah. Uh, this is an altar cloth. I don't know if you can oopsie. I don't know if you can see the church in, in uh, Harris Park. Wow. It's just just a test of sample. Tony, what a wonderful display. Um, could you tell us about it? Um, this is the Twisted Sisters Fabulous Felt right. um, Felting Exhibition and Display and we make um, everything from wearables to needle books, pin cushions, handbags, uh, sculpture, wall hangings and 
anything else? Jewelry? Right. Yeah. I didn't realise I sort of, sort of knew about hats and felt, but it's so much more versatile, isn't it's it? It's a very versatile fibre, and that's what we love about it. Is it? Can, yes. Yeah. It keeps you inspired oh, um, sure. to just find different things to make out of it. Yeah. So there would be quite a demand for your work. Well, yeah, we find a lot of people love it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. and they're fascinated that you can use wool yeah. for so many things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, very, very good. And have you been to many displays? The display work, obviously. Oh uh, yeah, we do have exhibitions. Yeah, recently we had an exhibition at the um, Dubbo Western Plains Cultural oh, Centre, right. yes, which was nice mainly water, wall hangings and sculpture. Yes. Um, and then that was December last year. Right. This, this year we've been at May Rochelle Gallery at Millthorpe and we've had um, a display at the Platypus Gallery at Forbes right. oh, uh, yeah. exhibition. We've got one coming up at the Pandora Gallery at Kula. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we, well, we yeah. get around and... No, and obviously you, like I, feel that these sort, sort of exhibits are wonderful for making the public aware of what's available. A lot of people are simply blown away by yeah. the process yeah. of how simple it is and, and the versatility of, of the fibre. Yeah. So this is the, the product that we use for the felting. Yeah. It's been scoured and, and combed and this is called a wool roving and it's, yeah. it's uh, merino wool. Australian merino wool and we buy it in in rovings and then we hand dye to suit the project right. that we're doing. So, so yeah. um, with this, so then it's, it's refined down to uh, yeah, thread we, or it's a wee... Yeah, we lay, it, we lay it out in a pattern and then we um, use soap and water and right. agitation. Right. And then we, um, yeah, you, you, that's the felting, wet felting process. Yeah. Um, sometimes you use a resist um, if you want to create a handbag, and the resist goes in there, and that stops the the wool felt both sides felting to each right. other. Yeah, yeah, so it, it creates a a cavity, yeah. Yeah. and that's the same process we use yeah. for the hats. Oh, well, so yeah. much in it. I, I'd love like to talk more, but uh, this has given us a, an overview. So have a great time in Bathurst. We will. Thank you for talking with us. No problem. Thank you. Gillian, you're doing some great work, some fine work. Gillian, tell me about your work here. Uh, weaving baskets using Bangalore palm inflorescence, which is this material here. Oh, right. Which has been dampened so it's flexible. Right. So, uh, how long have you been working on this particular piece? This has been um, for a couple of hours. This right, morning. you've got that. Yeah, ah, yeah. yeah just, we're just making little mini sample ones, just given the space and right. the materials. And yeah, just finishing this one up now. Right, and here are all your sample yeah, work. Yeah, a mix of mine and Sally's work. Beautiful work. Yeah, Sally, could you tell me what you're doing? Currently, I'm coiling with iris leaves. So, refuse from the garden. Right. You'd have otherwise money in compost bins or the green bin. And can make them little baskets out So, yeah. why waste them? It's uh, wonderful if people just don't realise what can be done. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important that you people uh, tell us or have and, these displays. I think you'd agree with me that the idea of having exhibits and workshops yeah. is a great one. Oh yes, absolutely. 
Are you from Bathurst or you come from a fair distance? Uh, um, both come from the Blue Mountains. Oh, right, right. So not too far. Yes, and you have lots of exhibits and displays there too, I think. And we both give workshops. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, that, that is great. And then you can go to really fine fabrics, can you, or what, for example? Yes, I, I do a lot of work with recycled materials. Right. So things that other people might throw away, yes, yes. I find yes. some sort of beauty in them and make them. Yes, oh, that, that is beautiful. I just come up to your waist, not fibre and design. Yes, very important. Branching out as well. So that's your firm, is it? Ah, uh, that's mine and my one of my sisters. Right. Waste not fibers is Sally's. Oh right. So all the best and thank, thank you so you. much for showing us uh, our pleasure. Have a good time. My name's Deborah. Deborah and I'm a spinner uh, and, and a weaver. Deborah, this is a nice interesting spinning wheel. Uh, could you tell me what you're doing? Okay, I'm actually spinning merino wool here. Right. Um, the spinning wheel that I'm using is called the Wee Peggy. She's right. an upright spinning wheel. Yes. And the beauty of this particular spinning wheel is it has its lazy tape built in. Right. Now, when I have spun two of the bobbins full of wool, I would then put it onto the lazy tape. Once I would take the ends, I would put it back through the machine and then I would ply the wool. Once I've plied it, I then take it off onto a ninny noddy. Which is this. Now I'm spinning it about a floor fly, which is quite fine. This is probably about a wool that I've got on here at the moment. Mm, so this is also Corridale wool. Yeah. Yeah. The beauty of the merino sheet is it's very, very fine. Right. And it's very dense. So. That's why it's so much in demand. Yeah. Absolutely. The best thing is it's made from merino wool. Right. Yeah. Uh, Once you get the swimming down and the. the uh, Magic ready, you can do anything virtually. Yes. That's probably. exactly right. Once it's spun up to this stage, yes. I would then ball it. Right. So how long would you be going to spin that amount of quantity ready? They continuously. Yes. Um, probably a week. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's very time consuming. Right. However, it's very relaxing oh, for sure. and you can lose an hour very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. I've been well, doing this for about five years. Thank you. Right. Yes. So, so um, the idea of it is to get to get your wool as even as possible. Right. And that without any lumps or bumps. How much tension you, you exactly. And it also depends on how much wool you pull. Right. Okay, and sometimes the type of wool dictates to yes. how thick it's going to be. Yes. You can make wool that's lumpy and bumpy on purpose, and it does have its place, but most of the time, with just plain knitting, you want it as even as possible. Right. Wonderful. So, when you're spinning, your wheel goes to the right, when you ply, the wheel goes to the left. Right. So, with your foot, you set it off in motion to the right. And all I'm doing is I'm teasing this wall out so that it's it's thin and even. Well, thank you so much for explaining that. There are lot, lots involved, and, uh, uh, but the product is worthwhile and uh, so appreciated by It's one nice. of the nicest hobbies I've done, and I've done quite a lot. Yes. Um, because I'm a historical reenactor, I can take my wheel with me anywhere yes. and still stay in the yes. And that, that is what I love about it. Um, and the fact that you can make 
useful products out of it. So once I've done this, I can knit it, I can crochet it, or I can weave it right. into cloth. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Why do we call that uh, lace work? Do we bobbin lace? It's a lovely bobbin lace material. Yeah. I think the, uh, uh, on a whole, please be prepared to ask questions and, you know, say a lot of rubbish or whatever else and say, you know, if you want to move on. Um, I'll just give a quick overview from this side so that you sort of get things in perspective. Uh, the farm square, and that was always formed of farm square, actually, even though it's a rectangle. We, we won't, we're not pedantic <laughs> about these things, are we? Um, they're the original farm building, so we have the blacksmith shop, shearing shed, hay shed, uh, barn, stables. Um, and I'll just go into this one in a minute. This is the agronomy shed where they used to store the seed for testing from. Uh, we had a lot of the f famous Australian uh, br wheat breeders who used to work here. Um, the curious thing about it, and I think probably uh, it's a thing we struggle with, you can see there's two metal caps there with uh, they fit pipes in there. Um, for storing the seed, they had to fumigate it, um, so they pumped gas in there. Many years after it was used as that, they decided it was a good place to put staff. <laughs> the staff, for some reason, were a little bit reticent about going in there when they saw that this was actually a gas chamber. <laughs> We had to sort of say, it's all right, it's all right, that's no longer operational. <laughs> um, but that's, there's some wonderful history in that place. So the people who worked there and uh, the experiments that went on and what developed. Uh, where Lynn works over here, it's, it's now a nursery again. But it was actually the nursery. The whole of that, there was an old glass house there. It wasn't old at that stage, it was a state of the art when we first set it up. And this is where all the uh, stool beds for the fruit trees, uh, all the seedling beds for the uh, vegetables which would go down to the... Uh... <laughs> and I don't know whether you're familiar with the... We had the river farm which was down on the uh, Morse Ovals uh, near the visitor centre. Uh, and that's where we used to grow the drugs. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Uh, well, it was actually. I've got some, I've got some in my archival room. Uh, it's tobacco. Oh, yes. It's funny though, people never sort of thought, right, we grow tobacco because people like to smoke and we won 
an international award, first prize for tobacco breeding in Paris for penicillium resistant tobacco. Um, so we were famous for that. But they used to use the tobacco for smoking, but also for spraying on the orchard trees to kill everything. <laughs> and nobody sort of thought, okay, it's killing that, and we're smoking it. Yeah. Is there any relation? <sighs> Uh, but the, 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 really, the, the plant breeder, two years after he won that award, resigned from the department. He became the first president of the anti-smoking oh. campaign in 1960, early 1960s, uh, and he, uh, Australia-wide, he, he developed that. And I thought that was a sort of a lovely irony there in some ways, and that was that was beautiful. And he was a, he was a lovely guy. Um, so that sort of that was the nursery, and it's now gone back to being a nursery and I think that's that's important as we start to look at what's happening around here. In 1890 we had that the massive uh, drought. Uh, we'll, no, we'll never have another drought like that again. Mm, think about that one. Uh, and you know, agriculture was in such a state because the rabbits were running rife, we didn't have any control measures for them. Um, so they started to set up experiment farms uh, and the first one was Hawkesbury followed by uh, Wagga and followed by here. Um, the interesting thing here, um, anybody from Orange here? No, okay. Bathurst and Orange have a, a, an interesting relationship with one another. It's like Sydney, Melbourne. Uh, we're better than them. <laughs> and the uh, Minister for Agriculture was the local member called Sydney Smith. And uh, he was looking about, uh, he was member for Bathurst. And really, Soil was better up at Orange. Maybe we should have put the research, the experiment farm up there. But, but Sydney, he was savvy. He got it put here and he got re-elected. It's happened again and again and again. I think it's something to do with pigs or something, isn't it? And barrels and something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was an interesting start. Um, and so that was in 1895. We actually had the first sod turned as an opening in 1995. Things happen a little <laughs> slowly sometimes. <laughs> so when we had the centenary, we had the first turning of the sod. Nobody had actually thought, I suppose we should open it. <laughs> um, so it, at its peak, we had 800 acres of Bathurst. Now when you think about the size of Bathurst, and particularly at that time, 800 acres. We went over to St Stanislaus, we had all the way down. Um, challenge, well they'll probably come to some of the bits over this way, but it was, uh, that was a massive part. And not only was the land and what was going on here, because we did everything uh, with animals, anything that grew, um, even I'd say almost kick-started the CWA because we did everything that, that ladies would do on a farm too. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was a key part. And the people who were involved here, particularly the manager and the blacksmith, were more important than the local member or the mayor. People referred to them, they, and uh, I don't know whether, you, do you go down and see the, um, the pillars, uh, the people who are pillars of Bathurst? Uh, Robert Peacock was the first uh, uh, longer term manager of the farm and he's now uh, 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 acknowledged as a pillar. He also kick-started the Carillion and they got that underway. But they're the sort of things that they were, managers were involved in those days. They were a key part of the community. And uh, yeah, well, I suppose nowadays we've got a lot of people up here today. We must, we must be a key part of the community mm -hmm. again. I like to think so anyhow. Um, these trees here, um, apart from the fact that they shouldn't have been mutilated by kangaroos. Um, the smaller one here is called red bow. Who, who's, ha who's eaten a red bow apple? No, I'm not, not totally surprised. We had a Frank Bowman, Dr. Frank Bowman, a world-renowned apple physiologist who used to breed thousands upon thousands of apple seedlings. The whole of the hillside behind the sheds up there, up there, was covered with these seedlings. He'd go through and assess them all, and he was here for 30 years. And after all that, he came up with one commercial variety called Red Bow. Oh, what happened to uh, Well, it went to the nursery for one year, and that was, only, that was nobody bought them after that. So. Why? Why didn't they uh, buy them? Um, 
that just wasn't what the commercial industry wanted at that stage. Um, worldwide, Frank did, was revered as somebody who was so knowledgeable about growing fruit trees. But the tree behind us here is Granny Smith. Yeah. Of course, Granny Smith worked for years on her breeding program. Yeah. <laughs> Go 180. This one. That's your steering. So which one is Rosalind better get on? So I'd better have a bit of a... Turn right and head down to the road. No worries. I could see you weren't enjoying it. And we'll, we'll get you up where it's nice and quiet. Off you go. Are we all staying together or? <laughs> look at my hat. We gotta sell tickets to this job. <laughs> With the Country Women's Association Hall, where the final display. Could you tell me if you had a good good attendance? Well, I was here this morning for a while and it's been very consistent. Yesterday was very busy, but I think it's been pretty consistent, yes. certainly this morning, and Margaret's been well, here all afternoon, so... Yes. Well, it's just people coming to the every, every From what I've heard of you, or see the other halls, people would be very satisfied uh, yeah. if they could have seen all the arts and crafts there. And we've been amazed at where people have come from right. and how they've heard about it. Yes, so I've heard that comment. Some, some saw the Heritage Trails Trust right. at, at the Sydney Royal Easter Show, right. but others have come from all over the place yes. because they saw it on Facebook. Yes. yes. So the social media is working. It's working I think well. it's a wonderful thing for Bathurst. Well, well, thank you, ladies, and uh, I must congratulate you on being like I am a volunteer at times to uh, help people see these wonderful displays. Thank you. Now I've been admiring this, uh, what do we call it, a loom? Is it it's or? a peg loom weaver, yeah, right. for peg loom, loom weaving and uh, it's a fairly old form of weaving, right. yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. this is bigger than I've seen most of them. Yes, most of them are much shorter, yeah. about that length. Well, a family friend actually made it for me, right. and yeah. he was going to make one for his wife, and I said, well, right. make it nice and yeah. wide so she can make four rugs. Yeah. And he asked if I had one, and I right. said, no, I haven't. He said, oh, I'll knock it up for you. I said, a right. lot of work. <laughs> but it's so it's been, wonderful. Uh, uh, doing this sort of handicraft for quite a while. Yeah, I've always been into handicrafts, right. and uh, I joined Spinners and Weavers in the 80s. But right. then I left for about 25 years while right. I was working full time, right. and I've been back again for about 10 years. So right. yeah, really right. enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. Yes, the Heritage right. Trail is just I amazing. Yeah, I hope so. Wonderful yeah. skills. Yeah. Oh, like absolutely. Yeah. And there are people here from, from Narrabri, Wollongong, yeah. uh, Sydney yeah. and the Hunter region. And right. I saw a man this morning and he said he was from Launceston. So I thought, well, yeah. that's pretty good. <laughs> Leslie, you're very busy here. Could you tell me what you're doing? I'm actually um, just uh, spinning um, a singles. Right. Uh, so that when I've finished doing this one, I'll do another bobbin, and then I'll ply the two together. Um, this is a fairly special wheel. It's, uh, it's really quite different to the others, but it's a very modern wheel, is this one. Right. If you have a look, the, the wheel actually goes a different way to everybody else's. So it's, um, it's really quite different. different. 
text is that maybe depend very much on the scooter. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, well, it depends on it depends on the, the fleece that you get in the first place. Right. The comp, you know, whichever sheep, yeah. because all of our all the sheep have different different feel, different, yeah. um, you know, whatever of, of each one, and they're um, so it depends on how thick or how thin that you're going to get it. The experience of the of the spinner. So I've been spinning for about um, six years. Mine's starting to get finer. These two ladies have been spinning for a long time, and theirs is very fine. So, yeah, yeah that's right. It's a long time ago in my English class. All those other little rat bags. Sally, at your table, there's lots of spinners. Yes, yes. Wonderful work. Tell me about it. Okay, so I'm spin spinning raw fleece in the grease, so it hasn't been washed. Um, this is my preferred way of spinning. So I have here, so that's combed up raw fleece, and I'm I'm spinning into a single single um, strand there. So it takes quite a while when you go through. What do we call that? The, the, just the this is a, wool. Yeah, 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 raw wool. And and this is this piece is called a staple. Right. And then when it's done, it goes onto a bobbin. That's, that's right. This yeah. is this is the bobbin. Yeah. So you can see that it's feeding onto the bobbin. Yeah. Um, and the bobbin is driven by the wheel. Right. Oh, so it's the spinning yeah, process. Do you knit some of the material? Is that one of your? This creations? is one of my creations, yeah, but yeah. Um, my mother spun the wool for this one, not, oh. not me, but I knitted it. Yes. And no doubt you've had lots of visitors in the last two days. We have. We've had a lot of visitors, yes. a lot of people who are interested to see the process. Oh, it's wonderful. Such wonderful and practical work. That yes. We congratulate you. Both on your skills and patience yeah. too. Isn't well, it? it's very enjoyable. Yes, oh, well, that's great. Thank you very much. No worries. Kathy, you're uh, at the spinner's table. Uh, what's happening here, isn't there? It's a great day. We've had two busy days. Right, very um, busy. Lots of people, yes. lots of interests. And yeah, yeah. Fun. yeah. And so, um, um, Margaret, could you tell me a little bit about what you're doing? I'm spinning uh, wool and alpaca that's been uh, washed, uh, blended, and uh, dyed. And I'm um, just spinning a single, and it'll get plied later on. Right. And uh, are you going to make an item from that or? Uh, yes, uh, probably a jacket. Right. It's a long process. <laughs> <laughs> this is bobbin number five. Right. So do you think it's a good idea to have these exhibits? I think it's wonderful. Yeah. So you take it and see how it used to be done. Right. And still be done. When you've That's very sweet, yeah. Like that. Yeah. And you will be no doubt, having other exhibits going on here. Um, we've got um, International uh, Spinning Day, uh, the third Saturday in September, and we'll be in the shopping centre, spinning, demonstrating spinning there. I think that's our next I think so. big function. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants to follow up the second, third, fourth Tuesday July and two pans. Uh, uh, I've just uh, been looking at your stand. What a wonderful stand. Uh, what a productive stand. Uh, could you, Pam, perhaps start off by telling me what your exhibit is? Yes. We're actually representing our craft cottage, Rankin Cottage Crafts, and we're exhibiting knitting, crocheting, and candle wicking and jam making. Right. Which are all heritage so, crafts. I have candle wicking, oh. and I'm, uh, which is work calico on calico fabric with 
actually wicks from the candles is what right. colonial people embroidered and decorated their house. Right. So we're right. I'm doing that. And how am I to do your thing? Yes, my knitting baby hats oh, for our nice cold winters. Right. Yes, and um, yeah, most enjoyable. So you, yes. you would have a pattern, do you? Yes, I do have a pattern, yes. 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 But some of it you can I do without a pattern. Yes. Or yes. Quite yes. 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 It yes. must be satisfying to you all love, to lovely. develop a product that yes. is, uh, yes. is very, uh, very much used. Yes. Yes. It is, um, yes. And uh, Joy, um, yes. uh, what are you doing there? I'm actually crocheting. Right. Um, this is the start of uh, like fingerless mittens <laughs> that I've made. Isn't that delightful? Yeah. yeah. So, and again, for the Bathurst, the cold Bathurst winter, we need something yes, to, to, sure. to keep the hands. Yes. We can't keep our hands still, so yeah. we have to do keep them all. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm. Yeah. I've got the yeah. mm -hmm. also got children's wear and uh, some crocheted stuff, beanies, more children's knitting and crochet, right. some, some scarves. Well, we have, uh, we have hand knitted socks, keep right. our feet warm, and we go into our crocheting <coughs> and cushions, oh, candle wicking. So it's yeah. showing how it can be used. Yeah. Crochet. Oh, right. I bet they're in demand and very yummy and yes. tasty. Yes. Oh, that is. Like so, what types of different fruits are you? Yes, fruits, yes, apricots, uh, plants, strawberries, and then Right. Pickles, yeah, pickles. Yeah. So, they're very available tasty. at Town and Country, aren't they? Yeah, and Rankin Cottage. Oh, right. Rankin Cottage. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Yes. excellent. Well, ladies, you're so a very a productive team there and uh, wonderful work. I congratulate you. you all and I hope you continue to exhibit uh, yes. so we all know the, the things yes, that are happening. Yes. We actually have a, a craft cottage that's been running in Rankin Street and we've been going for 33 years continually. We operate seven days a week from right. 10 to 4. So we're just a little group where they're yes. actually operating the shop today as well. Right. Yes, all these things are available down there. How are you? We've met many years ago. We have indeed met before, yes. Yeah. So in the filmmaking yeah. Come up. I know you to be such a diverse person uh, to the handicrafts. Could you yeah. tell me a bit about that? Yeah, okay. Well, what we're doing here is uh, we're constructing a, um, a representation of the Macquarie Bogan River catchment um, and uh, so it's kind of starting down in this corner at Bathurst and then working through Dubbo, Warren, Macquarie Marshes and so on um, and going up to the Barwon River. We're, we're really interested in water and uh, water policy but this yeah. is just kind of an engaging community spirited and accessible way to kind of get involved and um, think about water and where it goes and what's sure. happening with it. Water is such an important thing. We won't it is. get into that, but I know you're, <laughs> you're doing great work and yeah. people are aware and I think from the way government's going, they're aware, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, getting back to this, uh, is it to be a hanging yeah. or a... Uh, this, this particular thing will be a banner. So this is the River Yana's banner. Um, so we'll, we'll work on it, you know, over the months and yeah. future. Um, but the other thing we're doing is um, creating this uh, big, long representation of the Macquarie River. So it's now about 80 metres long and we unfurl it from time to time at community events. So we keep kind of adding to it and adding to it. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, so we're going to go to Forbes in June and sort of unfurl it around the whole park. Right. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a form of yarn bombing or right. craftivism. Well, yeah. How great. Mm. Is a very active indeed, and it's wonderful to see you. Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah. Rosie, the, the display this weekend is so fantastic in Bathurst. Do you think it's a good thing? 
It's been amazing, hasn't it? I mean, um, we've been doing this for three years now, being involved in this heritage trail thing, and um, each year it's built up and built up, and to this this time it's just been nuts. It's been so popular, um, and everyone's coming along, saying they've come from Penrith and Sydney and Wollongong, and yeah. they've come from far and wide. So I think it's just been the most extraordinary yeah. um, illustration of the diverse talents yeah. um, and um, activities in in Bathurst. For so it's sure. been that's incredible. Right. Yeah. 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 Like and that's what you're doing. Um, yeah. You want to have a little change? Just, you write a left handed, just make sure, hold it like you hold a, a pen, you know, a pencil, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to draw, then that one. That angle. Yep. And then, then away you, away you go. Maybe a bit slower, do you think? Yeah. X marks the spot, is that the Pirates <laughs> Treasure, is it? Yeah. It's a bit big for that, because I've had it down to do the shading on these things here. <laughs> <laughs> cool. How long do, would it take you to do a picture like this, do you think? Oh, they might be good done in a, in a couple of days if I'm sitting down doing it. Mm -hmm. I'll talk like this to try and so you do it all in pencil first? Yes. Yeah. If you want to try and make it darker, what do you do? Just go do that. What kind of wood is this you use using? It's over there. That's further back. The lighter it is, the wood looks out further in front. It looks clustered when it's down there, but when it sits up on a wall. What is this type of work uh, called? This is all needle lace. Oh, needle lace. Yes. Yeah. So needle lace was the very original right. lace, and then bobbin lace came along in response to try to keep up with demand, but right. to be more commercially viable because yeah. it was faster to make. So if I just get this piece over here. Now this piece is needle lace, right. all done with a needle and thread, worked on a foundation pattern, right. and then that pattern is released from underneath and you have fabric in its own right. Mm. Beautiful work. Thank and you. this thing of work, um, what do you call that? That's needle lace. Right. And it came to Ireland. Uh, in response to their poverty there yes. in the uh, in the 19th century, so right. 18s, uh, and it was brought by nuns into the hundreds who had been from Europe. Yes. They created this tape so that they could make it more quickly. Right. And so this was then sold as a much cheaper version of the European laces yeah. so that they could then make a little bit of money to keep right. the table. Yeah, it's so lovely to see you carrying on the, uh, you. the work and getting such good results. Thank you. Have you enjoy, enjoyed being at the exhibit? It's been fantastic. Has it? Yes. yes. And what I've loved about it is I've had the opportunity to really educate people right. about what lace is. Yeah. And in this setting, I've been able to show people not only the different styles of lace, yeah. but also achievable yeah. and more complex yeah. styles of lace so that they can decide whether they want to give it a try oh, themselves. Wonderful. Your group is called? The Bead and Wycraft Guild of Bathurst. Right, and we've seen a lot of you in the bicentenary, but it's good to see yep. the organisation still going strong. Yes, very strong. Yes. yes. Yep. I know you're almost packed up, but could you tell me a little bit about the, the slide? Right, we, we've got Madam, Madam Butterfly here. We've got a gum tree here. Right? We've got Stanley the snake and the chooks. Yeah. Oh, the trees yes, yeah. and the scenery. And we've got beaded jars and a vase. I didn't got realise it's so versatile, it's not yeah. like clothing, but uh, a whole gamble of artistic. And uh, 1920s, yeah. roaring 40s hat.
that way. <laughs> We've got a beaded and chainmail sculpture. We've got a beaded frog, necklace, wire work and gemstones. Lots and lots of variety of things and people can purchase these, can they? So yes, they can, yes. Do you have a storefront or are you just working from a group in the farm? Just a, a group right. in the, yeah. I must tell Helen that when we're looking for unique things and yep. have a look at that. Yep. I just didn't realise the versatility of your group. Yep. And it's lovely seeing you again and I think you'd agree with me, these sort of exhibits are a must, aren't they? They are. Yes. 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 Bring people Got to here. keep the trade going. Yes. Yep. Yes. Well, it's a final word. Thank you so much and convey my congratulations to the group. Tell them we'll have this film out in about Two months okay. Really Thank you. Fran, what a wonderful exhibit uh, these have all been. Uh, um, do you feel it's been worthwhile? It's been fantastic. This is our third year and it's gone from good things to even better things and we've had more than a hundred artisans here this weekend and look at the fabulous skills that have been on display. Um, we think it's a fantastic thing for Bathurst and we're delighted that it's Happening. For sure, everyone you talk with is uh, so enthused, not only the, the artisans themselves but the people who uh, ask the questions and comment on the, they didn't know that something was crafted that way really. Yes, and it's exciting to see these, uh, just, well, what could become lost trades yes, and crafts true. being kept alive by people with such enthusiasm and interest in what they're doing so, yes yes and it's been terrific because there have been people here from lots of locals but from all over the place we had some people from south australia and western australia mm -hmm. so it's it's great yes yes and it's something to do rather than just sit at the television set or vegetate uh, yes and it's uh, great to see young people young kids coming through getting yes. involved participating in it yes and, uh, for sure so valuing our rich heritage yes so just tell me the name of your committee so people wanting more information if people want all more information we're a loosely formed group that is the bathurst heritage trades trail group and you can get in contact with us through the bathurst visitor information center dan co the manager of the bathurst visitor information center can then connect with the other people in the group wonderful fran that's uh, tremendous and uh, Again, congratulations to your committee and all those involved. It's been great. No way. Wonderful. Nothing um, goes well without a cuppa or um, a premises, and you've provided those. Have you enjoyed the day? We have. We've been working hard, but it's been well worth the week. So, yes, people will remember that for sure. Well, thank you. And thank that you. cuppa that I got has rejuvenated me very much. Thank you. Glad to help. Yeah.